if you're going to recover from a situation, you're going to want to test prior to that. You don't want your first time going through to be the incident. And so you're going to plan and you're going to test for this. Unless you try it, you'll never know what you missed or things you need to add or modify on the plan. Many people will schedule these tests. They'll do them once a month, they'll do them once a year, and they'll go through the process of understanding how do our processes work? Are they as effective and efficient as we expect them to be or, or that we need them to be? So we'll create a scenario. Let's say we lose the building. Let's say this server goes down. Let's say a database crashes. What do you do? And they go through the process of grabbing the backups, loading them on some new hardware, obtaining new hardware, maybe finding a new building with a new internet connection, maybe failing over to our redundant facility. We want to include as much of the organization as possible during these tests, but we don't want to affect any of the currently production systems going on. You obviously would not fail a real server that's being used in on your production network to provide your services to your end users. You also want to think about documenting this, especially during the testing phase. Should an actual emergency occur and cause a downtime to your business, that's not the time to go through and think if you're doing this right. And maybe we should change this for next time. You want to do that during your planning phase and during your testing phase. And afterwards, you'll be able to look at that list and say, what worked during our test? Or what did not work during our test? Do we need to change our processes? Do we need to buy additional resources? Or do we need to think differently about how we're going to handle this problem should it occur? A business and organization is not just the IT department. It's not just the HR department. It's just not just the finance department. A lot of these processes that we're doing day to day in our organizations involve a lot of different people in a lot of different departments. The HR, for instance, drives the payroll process. IT provides the systems used to process the payroll and maybe even print the checks. And the accounting department, of course, provides the money for all of this. So all of those operational functions surrounding things as simple as payroll are actually behind the scenes a relatively complex process. Almost everything in your business is going to rely on IT, though. Almost everything we're doing these days goes through our computer systems. So that's probably the first place we'll start, is get our systems up and running as quickly as possible, and then blend together all the different software and links we need between all of these different departments. When you're planning this and you're building all of your policies for this, you'll want to make sure you include the entire company with this. Include the HR department, include the payroll system, the, even the manufacturer of the payroll software, include your accounting department and everyone else. It is remarkable how interrelated these things are. And ultimately, we need to make sure we have a document on this. And that that's kind of a difficult thing to be able to take all of these very complex business processes and be able to put them in a way that we can understand how they operate so then therefore we can recover them should a problem occur.